your life. <laughs> yes, I know I'm live. I can tell. <laughs> Funny inside joke. You guys missed it. Sorry. Welcome to Frizy's Corner Bar. Another Friday night here um, with Shannon and Max and Gracie the Bar Cat. So we've got an interesting show and uh, I'm anxious to get into it. But before we do, just want to make sure you guys are all having a good week out there. Glad it's Friday here. Tomorrow is leaves, one more cut on the grass, and we are done, hopefully. So, um, last week I tried talking using notes, and that sucked, okay? I won't ever do that again. I knew all the material, I typed it all up myself, out of my head, and then when I tried to use notes, it just didn't work out. So I apologize for that, it will never happen again. So, it's all going to be off the cuff. And tonight, um, I actually made a couple of things. I posted the recipe at friesiscornerbar.com. You can check it out there. And what I did is I did roasted vegetables. And I also decided I would throw on a pork tenderloin. And I have, <clears throat> I have it right here. I just pulled it out of the oven about three minutes before. So I've got all my roasted vegetables. I don't want anything to fall out of here. And then I have a, um, my pork tenderloin. So I just laid that right across the top there. So these vegetables are... Um, These, um, these vegetables are really easy. You just slice and dice, and then there's some herbs that I put in there with a little bit of salt and pepper um, to finish it off. And you always want to try to use fresh ground salt and pepper if you can. Anytime you can use fresh herbs, that makes a huge difference. And what's nice about doing roasted vegetables is I did carrots and onions. I went to the store. I looked at what was really fresh, what looked appealing as well as some of the things that were on sale. So I actually changed a little bit of what was on the recipe. I threw in some anise, some poblano peppers. Um, what else was in there that I added in? Uh, I don't remember, but anyway. So you can be very easy. You can, it's very easy to choose vegetables to roast. The one thing you wanna be careful of is you don't wanna do things like broccoli because with all these other vegetables because they cook faster and what you end up with is all these burnt treetops on the broccoli so you want to do those separate um, the pork tenderloin was very easy to do i just took pork tenderloin i um you always want to dry it off you want your meat to be dry before you ever roast it because you want it to brown nice you want it to have a nice color to it so once i um, dried it off then i sprinkled it with salt and pepper all around both sides then I took bacon, I took two slices of bacon, I wrapped that around because pork tenderloins really don't have very much fat, they're probably about a three to four percent fat ratio. So then I wrapped that bacon around, that adds a nice smokiness to it as well as gives a little bit of juice to it. And then to top that off, I just took a little, a little bit of olive oil and just drizzled that over the top. I put it into the oven, same time I put the vegetables in. Um, one thing I want to kind of point out on this, when you do these roasted vegetables like this, you want to start checking them. What I did is I put them in for 20 minutes, then I pulled them out, I flipped them all around to make sure we get a nice even brown on those, slide them back in, and then I set my timer for 20, no, I actually set the timer for 10 minutes, I checked them, I set it for five more minutes, and they were done. My recipe says about 40 minutes, but you really want to start checking those a little early. And also on your pork tenderloin, sometimes you get a big one, it might take a little bit longer, so you always definitely want to tempt those. Um, what I cooked here tonight took about 35 minutes in total. So let me show you quickly what it looks like before it goes into the oven. So here are my vegetables. The key on this is you don't want anything on top of each other because then what you end up doing is steaming the vegetables, and you don't want that. This pan actually is just a tiny bit crowded, but I didn't have room in the other pan. So I have everything in here, celery, carrots, peppers, sweet potatoes, um, poblano peppers. And then here's my pork tenderloin. So um, dry it off, salt and pepper it, wrap it in bacon. Then I just drizzled a little olive oil on it. So, okay, and I toothpick it in just to hold the bacon in place. So I'm gonna slide this into the oven and I'm gonna turn this, uh, over to Max, and Max is going to talk to you on a very interesting topic, and I think you guys will appreciate it, or not. Max, uh, hey, 
So, speaking of pork, um, I'm a big fan of uh, local pork um, because most store-bought pork that you get is really kind of gross. Uh, it's really it's really pale, um, and it's not you know the products aren't as good as what you can get locally. Uh, so to find this local, so we actually uh, bought a whole bunch of local pork. Uh, we're actually doing that for Thanksgiving instead of turkey. Um, so this is from Revival uh, Revival Farms down in Plimpton. They are a really cool uh, thing because you can just order online. Uh, we went and picked it up, uh, I think, what was it, like 7 o'clock at night? Yep. Yeah, we went and picked it up at like 7 o'clock at night. They had left it outside in a cooler, uh, like with uh, on ice for us. Um, we picked it up and we just brought it home. And it probably took, it was maybe 10 minutes out of the way. Um, but it was, you know, it's a really great, um, great product. If you just look at the color here, it's, a, it's this one's frozen because uh, that's how they come. But the color on this is a lot darker, and that means that the pork led a better life, ate, ate better food, um, and I'm, I'm, you know, and again, you're supporting local local stores, and you're not supporting these big chain supermarkets and things like that. So, um, and the best way to go about doing that, they have these things called CSAs, which are basically you you sign up for it. They, you, you know, a lot of these farms, you can if you just want to do vegetables, if you want to do chicken, beef, pork, whatever you're looking for, uh, if you just type in. You know, I think the way we found this was we just typed in local pork farm on Google and it popped up uh, to be, you know, there was like probably five or six in the area. This was uh, the closest and most convenient for us. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a great option. And again, buying local is always, uh, is always a it's even a better option than buying organic, um, which is, you know, it's kind of crazy for people to hear because most of these local farms are organic in everything that they do. Uh, they just don't meet the certifications to get certified by the USDA. Um, so you're, it's always a better option to buy local, or even over organic, as well as you know, um, supporting these local farmers through these CSAs is a great way to get out the, uh, to help support local and help support uh, our local economy. Um, and it cuts down on a whole bunch of things. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. I told my parents I wouldn't lecture you guys on this. <laughs> I could talk for 30 minutes on this topic, but uh, I just wanted to bring it up as a way for you know because I know it, you know it. Right now it's winter time where we are, but if you know, I know if you're in the Midwest, I know there are still farms producing a lot of vegetables. It's still pretty, you know, it's not as cold as it is here, so you can still get some of those late fall vegetables, um, and it ends up being cheaper. This was probably this. The pork is a little bit more expensive than what, what you're going to find at the store, but you know, you pay for the quality, uh, you know, and also it's probably not more expensive than your, you know, your cup of coffee at Starbucks. You know, it's uh, you know, it's that price difference. I think you're paying for the quality and. Um, you know, you're paying for the better product. Uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, so yeah, so this is Revival Farms if people are in uh, the, the South Shore area. But I know there was like five or six other ones in the area if you're, you know, you're a little bit further north than Pl uh, Plimpton or any of those things like that. So, uh, but yeah, so buy local. And, uh, you know, we like to, we like to do that. We, we ended up spending, you know, a decent amount. We got a, a lot of things uh, so that, you know, we didn't just want to buy like one pork chop or, you know, something like that. So we bought a lot and it all, it's all frozen to begin with. So, you know, you can just put it in the freezer and pull it out as necessary. And I mean, that's a five pound pork loin. It's gonna feed, feed a family of four. We're gonna, you know, eat it for Thanksgiving and probably have leftovers for the next two days. So, uh, that's it, that's all I have. Uh, my mom's gonna make some great cocktails tonight. This is what, one of our first ones that, uh, well, I guess our second one because we did the pumpkin ones, but this is our, like one of the second cocktails that we've kind of come up with on our own. Um, so yeah, I'll let her do her thing. Okay. So, uh, so last week, after our uh, aged cocktail show, we had a lot of leftover grapefruit and lemon juice because we had used, I had used the rinds to make the liqueur, and they're coming along great. Next week, we'll uh, show, we'll probably do the second phase of making the lemon cello and the grapefruit liqueur. But we had a lot of grapefruit juice left over, and we were experimenting with different cocktails uh, that featured grapefruit juice. And we came upon this cocktail called the Old Friend. And the Old Friend is, is an ounce and a half of gin, a three quarters ounce of the grapefruit juice, a half an ounce of Campari, and a half an ounce of elderflower. So I'm gonna make an Old Friend, but we also, um, wanted to experiment with different flavor profiles, and I had gotten a couple other liqueurs to try. They were high, highly rated liqueurs, uh, and one of them is a Grand Classico Bitter, 
So the cocktail that we created, which we named my old friend Iris, is we, we are, we're going to substitute the Grand Classico bitter for the Campari. And then these, this co these cocktails also feature elderflower liqueur. Uh, on the website, I've posted four different versions of, fr of the old friend. So there's the old friend, the old acquaintance, my old Mexican friend, as well as... Uh, my friend Iris. My friend Iris. Yes. yes. What are you laughing at? <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's the old Mexican friend. It is. Yeah. So, so this Iris liqueur is another liqueur. This, this is hard to find. The only place that we... Uh, this I got from Total Wines or More, as well as the Grand Classico. I even called all around locally, and um, to, to only Total Wines or More carried this. This liqueur is actually a liqueur made in Oregon that is made from iris root. So it has very similar floral notes to the St. Germain, which is an elderflower liqueur. There's also other elderflower liqueurs that you can purchase, but this is the one we have to have. So I'm going to make two different versions of this cocktail, just so you can really see the difference in the colors and, and the like. And so first I'm going to start out with the, uh, um, I'm going to make two of the old my friend Iris and one of the other. So we're using three quarter ounce of the grapefruit. And then the old friend calls for gin and the old Mexican friend calls for um, mezcal. So it's an ounce and a half of the the liquor, whichever whichever your preference, whether it's gin, and you want to use a dry gin because you don't want to, you've, uh, a, a botanical gin will, will, doesn't pair well with the florals because a lot of the botanicals have different florals. And this is a, this is a handful of a bottle, but this is a Raspado Mezcal. I find this, with this cocktail, the smokiness of the Reposado. There it is. Yeah, we got <laughs> the it. smokiness we go. of the Reposado really um, highlights the liqueur. It's, uh, it's delicious. Okay, so then it's a, uh, a half ounce of the bitter. This one, this is uh, the old friend, so I'm using the Campari bitter, and then a half an ounce of the elderflower. So that is the old friend, and then the. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna rinse this jigger out because I don't wanna. Boss contaminate it. And so this is a half an ounce of the bitters, but this is the one that I'm making too. And we'll let the guys fight over which one they... Uh... Oh, uh, yeah, I already know what I'm having. <laughs> you, you get the other flower one. Max isn't a fan of elderflower. No, just St. Germain. I just think it's gross, so... It's too sweet, it's too overused. It kind of overpowers a cocktail, in my opinion. But I was I was convinced I wasn't gonna like the iris as well. But you know I I drank I drank my words on that one. So. Okay, and these are both shaken cocktails. So I'm gonna actually let Max shake one while I uh, see. I think the elderflower is good, but you've got to be careful nope, on, on how much you use.
you don't have a coupe class, we went to Savers and got four for four dollars. So we're pretty thrifty on that one. So yeah, coupe glasses are actually one of the easiest glasses to find at uh, at a thrift store. I guess uh, most people don't uh, don't appreciate the coupes like we do. And there's always the dump swap shop. Yeah. Can you even go to the dump store? Not, not right, right now. Right now. now. In the, uh, the time of COVID. Okay, so you can go to screen this. And you can... Now this cocktail takes a grapefruit, a swath of grapefruit. Oh, the thing about the grapefruits, the grapefruits we use are the Florida grapefruits that have the thin skin. The other grapefruits are near as good for juicing. The Florida grape, Florida is really known for their juice, uh, the fruits that they, the citrus that they do for juicing. So. Um, so I highly recommend looking for the Florida. And we're just going to zest the grapefruit. And then I'm going to show you the difference in the color of these two drinks. And uh, so the one with Campari is very pink. And the uh, My Friend Iris is, is a, a beautiful golden yellow color. So Mike, you want to come? Mm -hmm. Taste your cocktail. Okay. So, cheers, cheers everybody. Everyone. Thanks for joining us. And always, we'll see you next Friday. See you next Friday. Make sure you uh, like, comment, like, and share. comment, and share. We have a YouTube site. We have an Instagram site as well as our Facebook site. So uh, all of our videos are on YouTube. And we have our website where all of the recipes can be found. So everything's at Frizy Corner Bar. And happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Cheers.